Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to season one, episode three of Scrollers Chat. I'm your host, Richard Lee Nyden, along with my panel tonight. Uh, we're going to go down the panel and introduce the panel, starting with Mr. Russ Clarity. Can you hear me? Uh, Lee, I think you've muted yourself. He did. <laughs> I was going to say that. Oh, now we can hear you. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm Russ Clarity. Um, you can find me on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all under Simply Wooden Creations, and uh, also www.simplywoodencreations.com. Just type Simply Wooden Creations into YouTube or Google, and you will... Uh, Come across me. We had a little bit of an accident before y'all got in here, or we got in here to the thing. So, and this is my son Cameron. How's it going? And he doesn't have a uh, YouTube channel or anything. He he just comes into the shop and uh, messes around with me. We play on the scroll. Well, right now he's he's enjoying the lathe, new lathe I have, so he's playing on the lathe. But all right, thank you. All right, moving on to Rick Hutchinson. Rick Hutchinson, uh, website scrollsaws.com, uh, YouTube, and Facebook under Rick Hutchinson. Okay, thank you, Rick. All right, moving on now to Katie Dotson. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. There's nothing on it. Uh, I'm too big to scroll in. And as soon as I quit overthinking everything, I'll get something done. All right, thank you, Katie. All right, moving on to Mr. Carl Taylor. Hey, Lee, thanks for having me. Thanks for having the panel on tonight. Carl Taylor, uh, about 30 miles northeast of Atlanta, about 30 minutes from Katy. I uh, appreciate it if you check out my YouTube channels, Scroll Saw and Woodworking Videos. And one of the clubs that I belong to, the Gwinnett Woodworkers, just happened to be one of the co-founders. Our YouTube channel has roughly 40,000 subscribers now, so I'd encourage you to check that out too, Gwinnett Woodworkers Association. Thanks. All right, thank you, Carl. And last but not least, Miss Donna Presley. Uh, Donna Presley. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Donna's Wooden Art. Also have a webpage, donnaswoodenart.com, and hopefully in a couple months have a couple of new videos up. This is my grandson, Benjamin. All right. Thank you, Donna. All right. Um, right now, we're going to uh, move on to talking about cutting techniques with Rick Hutchinson. Uh, but before we do that, um, I want to put a special uh, prayers and good wishes out there for uh, Charles Staring's father. Uh, who's in the hospital. I don't know anything more than that, but uh, he couldn't be on the panel tonight. So um, make sure you guys send him best wishes. All right, uh, Rick, if you're ready, we'll move over to you. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Rick. I think Rick is frozen. I don't know. <laughs> He's trying. There we go. I think there I can go. unmute it now. All right. There you go, Rick. Okay. So we was going to talk about the scroll saw techniques. Um, that's one of the first things I always like to do is sit so I'm straight in front of the saw and push, push my wood in. And as you can see, I'm cutting off to an angle. 
So now I move my chair off to the right until that blade is looking straight down the cut that I made. And now I know when I push straight into it that I'm cutting straight down the line that I've got. So when I come here on a corner like this, I can push straight in. When I get to this corner, I know I turn. And when I'm looking straight down this line at the blade, that I should be following that line. Well, I didn't. So once I get positioned, then the next thing I like to do is everybody's got their own method for squaring the table. A lot of them say to run a block in and then turn it around and see whether it lines up or not. The one I like to do that seems more accurate to me is to come in and cut out a little square or a rectangle or whatever. And now once I cut that out, that should come out the top and come out the bottom the same way. And, and the gap shouldn't, we can see the gap there maybe. And see when I'm clear down, I've still got about the same gap. But it does come out both directions. So that's telling me my table's pretty square. Um, talk about some of the different cuts, like making the square corners. And for those, I just come in and when I get to the corner, I usually don't stop or anything. I just come down to the corner and turn. Now, a lot of people, when they make the square corners, like to come down from this direction and stop. And then they like to come out here and come back into the corner and do that all the way around. And I just find that takes quite a bit of time. I don't want to come down here. And then I come back up. And I just find to make those extra cuts in the corners seems to take too much time. Uh, the other one is when we try to cut down into the bottom of a V, I see a lot of them come down and then they'll want to come back and cut down into the V. Another way I like to do those if you can come down and then I back off a little bit and I can spin around and I don't know if you can see where I turn the blade here but that's in the waist wood and then back down into it and then come out and I can get just just about as sharp a V and I don't have the problem here of where I stop this cut and then I try to come in and start. A lot of times we'll end up, I guess it didn't show up, we'll end up with a little nib right there where we went into the cut and started back into the cut. Uh, when I do start my inside cuts, and I guess I didn't drill a hole for one, uh, I think I can get to my Dremel here. And I just use a Fordham tool to make my holes for my fretwork. But we, when we get into these inside cuts, and a lot of times those are on a curve or something that we're going to cut out, um, I, I start into them. Um, around my curve and then when you get back to the end and end up with this little nib using the right side of the blade you can use that as a sander and sand your little nibs off right there with the blade and that way you don't have to go back in later with a little sand or anything to cut those off um 
other things when we're making arcs. So if we're going to make an arc, whoops, not a very good arc. If we're going to make an arc like that, I use this finger as a pivot finger, and then I kind of hold the wood there so that I can pivot the wood on that finger, which makes it a little bit easier to follow an arc around. Uh, works great for circles and stuff. I'm not very good at drawing circles, but same thing. We can come in and we can set that finger right there. hold that wood down and make circles other questions or types of cuts Don are there any uh, questions for Rick over on the uh, outside chat uh, no don't have any yet okay, okay. Uh, does anyone on the panel have any questions for Rick Hey, I got a question for Rick. Uh, personally, I always keep the waist area to the right side of the blade. Which way do you prefer it? Okay, I always keep my save area to the right because when I was in here and showed sanding that, I can sand easier. Plus, I find that normally I can turn. If I get a line... Now, and one way to test this, or to kind of prove it to yourself, if I get a line, and I get off the line over here, and I try to get back to it, I can't get it by just trying to shave into it. I've got to turn the wood and really make a little dip there. If I'm going over here and make it, I can just kind of shave right along it, because the right side of the blade grabs into the line better, or the left side of the blade has a tendency to try to just follow the existing cut. So I always put my save piece on the right side over here. Thomas just because I seem to have better control over the blade. Thomas wants to know if Rick is left-handed. Yes. That's the reason. But left or, left or right hand doesn't make any difference to me. I, I just always have my save piece on this side because of the way the blade cuts on this side. Because I can, like I say, if I get off a line and try to cut back into it, see, I'm not cutting into it. I'm trying to, but I'm not. Or if I go this way and try to cut into it, see, I can just shave right off and start cutting right into it. I hate the people my is using the left and the right side. Okay, I got a question. Russ, you're right handed, correct? I am no, I'm I'm ambidextrous. I can use either hand. Okay, well who's right handed? Do you cut the same way that Rick's cutting? Or do you normally do it the other way? I'm left handed, I do it that way. I I go any which way. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Sometimes I cut on the left, sometimes I cut on the right, sometimes I cut down the middle of the line. Well, as far as correcting a cut. Correcting a cut? I mean... You know where you got the burrs sticking out, it's like... Would you well, do it I, the same way, or would you go about it from the other side? Uh, the blade's just going to slide off the other side, though. I, I, I don't have that problem as far as... Correcting it either way, whether the blade's on the left or the right. I mean, personally, I mean, I think it has to do with the blade you're using. I'm using Flying Dutchman, and I don't have that problem with them as far as I can correct it on either side without any problem. Don, are you talking about when you go, uh, you're going along and you like miss the line and you have to go back and cut the little tiny piece out? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just go out on the other side. It's not, like Russ said, it's not a, Side or side, I just go in there and. Yeah, I don't have a problem going either either the left or the right. Either way, it I can correct it. I don't have a problem. 
Okay, we, we have a drill, uh, a drill bit question from Edward. Um, I have two drill bit sets for my hand and drill press. The smallest is 1 16th, I think. Where do you get really small drill bits for fret work? I get mine from Sloan's Woodshop. I have no mine. Thanks, Carl. Carl has them. Yeah, Carl okay. has them. Sloan's, Wildwood, a lot of them carry them. And most uh, of them have a chart that will tell you what right. size drill. Carl, you have in uh, trouble hearing? What did you say, Lee? I said, uh, go ahead. You, you raised your hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, t I tell you what, anybody that watches this uh, video, if they want some drill bits, the, I have the 20 piece assorted drill bit set from number 60 to number 80. I will let, let them have them for um, $3 a set plus 50 cents shipping. So make sure you. Uh, so, what uh, she, she, she may email scrollsoftvideo at gmail.com if you're interested. But you have to watch this video to get that deal. But what's the common one, Carl? Excuse me? Isn't it like 57, I think, is for uh, like a number five blade? And I can't remember. That sounds about right. You can also get them at uh, Mike's Workshop dot uh, com along with the uh, Flying Dutchman blades. He sells the uh, small um, small drill bits there, and also the uh, chuck for small drill bits because uh, the b bits that can actually get so small that they won't fit into your um, drill. So you have to use some kind of a chuck, especially on a uh, if you're using a drill press. Um, can you grab that green drill. I got a little something I want to show you real quick about that is on my Dremel a long time ago, the end of the cable for the handheld thing broke. And I love that little chuck in the end of the Dremel thing so much that I just cut the, this is where the cable was attached at one time down, down here on this end. And I just cut this all off and left it just like that. And I use this for my chuck for my little drills. I love it. All right. Uh, Carl, you might want to clarify that if you watch the video live, you get that deal. Or as Edward says, a few months from now, somebody might watch it and go, hey, I want that deal. I'll, I'll, I'll honor that deal for three months. I don't care who watches it. Who or when? I've got plenty of time. Right. That would be three months from June 26, 2017. Correct. You can bet I'm going to pick you up on that. I'm going to work something <laughs> from you. Shoot me an email, and I'll tell you how to, um, how to make the purchase. I can always use extra bits. Yep, I was going to say, I might hit you up for a couple of them myself. In fact, if you want me to, I'll go get a set of them so I can show you exactly what you'll get. Sure. Be right back. Okay. There's the, the standard little chuck that you buy when you get them from, you know, Sloan's or Wildwood or something. And then the other way you can use them is with just a pin drill. And that has a swivel top on it. That uh, you can just put down on the wood and apply pressure, and then and then turn the drill bit by hand. So you can go with the, the hand handheld, hand powered, or like Russ says, there's the one that chucks up in your drill press or in your Dremel tool, and will take the small bits. You can also buy collets for the Dremel that will fit the different size bits. Okay, I'm back. Can everybody see this? Hold on one sec, Carl. There you go. Yep, we can see you. You need your mic on, Carl.
All right. Uh, I unpresented Rick. Are you, uh, are you uh, all done? Do you have an uh, um, just uh, uh, don't you, uh, Carl, don't you sell the little uh, drill, chuck, drill chucks also? Yes. Yes. Uh, this will hold all of these drill bits also, but uh, I only have like 20 of these left. So. I only have 20 of these left. So. Yeah, I've got one. Do you like it? Yeah. Actually, you gave it to me uh, uh, a year or two ago. <laughs> it's been a couple of years, I think, you gave it to me. Cool. I, and I, I use it also. It's just I keep the um, one that I showed you uh, chucked up in my drill press all the time. And what I do with this one is I usually just swap this out. If I'm going to do some holes and some small stuff that I really don't have to worry if it's really perpendicular, uh, I'll shut this up in my uh, handheld drill, like for quarter-inch Baltic birch. Uh, on a big hole, I'll just chuck it up and use the handheld drill for this one. And if you don't mind me saying, these are actual Jacobs brand chucks. Yes, they work very, very well. You can see I've had mine so long that it's starting to rust. Uh, uh, Carl. Yes. Can you repeat your email and the price? Of the bits, scroll saw video at gmail dot com. I will have. I will let you have. If it's in the uh, U.S. forty eight, I will send you a set with shipping of these drill bits for anybody who watches the show for the next three months or until I run out for three dollars and fifty cents. That includes shipping. Well, you got two sets sold right now me cool well I have like 200 sets left then well and and I'll tell you what I'll, I'll, I'll send Lee about five sets so he can give away to whoever he pleases I appreciate that Carl anyway I didn't mean to make this a selling thing but <laughs> <laughs> here give me a five give me a five give me a five give me 25 give me 25 25 now, Carl, do you have a dozen packs of different sizes, too? I, I do, but I don't have them all sorted out right now. But I have approximately 12,000 drill bits in stock that are not sorted out. Okay. Okay. One more question. General use not being rough, how long should blades and drill bits last? I assume those are your biggest expense next to wood. It depends on how much you cut and how what kind of wood you cut. And I mean, there's a lot of dependings. Like I can get, uh, usually I can get two or three projects out of one blade without too much trouble. I mean, but it also depends if I'm cutting, if I'm cutting like three quarter inch, uh, cherry or mahogany uh, and a very intricate cross so to speak then I probably will go through a couple of blades but now I use real small blades intentionally so I can get really really accurate uh, <laughs> cuts but yeah I would say it, you should at least get one or two projects out of a blade and then drill bits those are the little funny things because they especially if they're such a small drill bit and you're going into a small area and like half inch or three quarter inch wood you can snap those things by just looking at them I mean those things snap really easy so you have to really be careful if it's a thin wood then you shouldn't have any problems just take your time and don't force it and uh, let the drill bit do the work and don't just especially if you're on a, um, a drill press don't just drive right through slowly push it through same thing on a hand drill, slowly go through because those bits are really, really, really easy. To, I've I went and hadn't broken a bit in months and tried to go through a th piece of three quarter inch mahogany one day and broke three bits back to back trying to go through it. So, you know, I, I had an engineer tell me that those small bits need to be run at high RPM, and he's talking. You know, 20,000 RPM. 
Yeah, but the problem with that, there ain't no drill or drill press can do that. It had to be it have to be something like a Dremel or something to pull that many. Right, right. Using a Dremel or something or a router. Uh, yeah. Putting them in there and, yeah. and running them at high speed. Hey, uh, Rick. I don't know if you know this, but uh, you're still showing the scroll saw. It's not you. <laughs> okay. Well, I can. Just so you know. <laughs> Now, I, I can have a drill bit last me months or longer, and then again, I can take a brand new drill bit, one of the little bitty ones I use, and accidentally move it not quite right and just break it right in half. Yeah. So it varies. Always have extra on hand. Yeah. Like I said, I haven't broken one in months, and that one cross, I never will forget that. The bit was in there, pulled it down on it one time, ping, snapped. Put another one in there. Bored about three holes. Boom. Snapped. Had to put the third one in before I finally got all the holes drilled. I don't know what was going on. But like you said, Don, I had them last for um, months and not break. See, for my hole drill, and I use the Fordham tool that's running probably, what, 30,000 RPM or something. Then I don't seem to have the problem snapping the bits. Well, like I said, most people don't have, uh, like on your Dremel, for instance, it takes that special, um, I, I forget what you call it now, but anyway, that, that you push down, it keeps your Dremel straight, that you can, uh, a lot of people don't have that. That's kind of expensive. Actually, it's come down in price. I noticed that the other day I was looking at it, but. Uh, most people use either a hand drill or a drill press. So. You're talking about the workstation. Yeah, well, no, it's not the workstation. There's a, a, a Dremel has a little attachment that you can put around it, and it'll act like almost like a plunge router for the little Dremel tool. Yeah, that's the plunge router base that, for the Dremel. Yeah. I've been wanting one, and they, they for years they were like 50, 60 bucks, and I think they've come really down in price lately, so I think I'm going to order one. Seiko has a little, uh, I almost want to say a Dremel on a plunge base that they sell for drilling holes, but they're pretty expensive. I think it's over 100 bucks for the thing. Yeah, theirs is like 120, 100, between 125 and 150 bucks, but it's uh, it comes with a a base on it and everything. It's it's pretty cool if you've got that kind of money. I mean, somebody had one for sale on Facebook for sixty dollars. It's in one of the Facebook rooms. Yeah. Wow. I did. I mean, I have been using a drill press and a hand drill for years and years and years, and I don't have a problem. I mean, I have my drill press set as high as the speed as it'll turn, and then the hand drill naturally is as high as it'll go. But I don't have a problem breaking bits. Um, Every once in a while, you're going to run into that situation where you'll pop a few. But uh, on a normal basis, it'll last me for oh, a couple of months. Sometimes it just it just depends. Like I said, the thickness of the wood, the type of the wood, all those things. If you're going to do three quarter inch uh, cherry or mahogany or uh, sable or something on a daily basis. I guarantee you're going to go through a lot more bits. If you're popping it through uh, quarter-inch Baltic birch plywood, a bit will last you a long time. Hey, Russ, I got a question for you. Yes. What, behind you on your mag light, I see a piece of blue tape on there. What do you have that for? Uh, that actually is because I was in. It was in transportation. Like I will take it sometimes when I go to Rockler and do the teach school stall classes because those are my eyes, and I tape it together so it's easier to carry it. Don't flop all around. Okay, just curious. Yeah, actually, um, this one has done me very, very well. There's nothing wrong with it. I even dropped it and broke the uh, glass underneath it, and it's still the bulb still works. This thing is like eight years old, six or eight years old. Um, matter of fact, when I dropped it, the little toilet seat finally broke off everybody used to call it a toilet seat that was up there <laughs> and so uh, I'm gonna buy a brand new one here and put it on this scroll saw 
and then take this one here and it'll stay in the box with my stuff that goes back and forth with me to uh, when I teach classes. So is that the Harbor Freight brand? That's the Harbor Freight brand. I had hey. so many people tell me those ain't worth a flip. The things will wear out. They won't all stay up and all this other kind of bull hockey. Well, that one's like, like I said, at least six years old, maybe eight. And uh, <laughs> it works just as good as those uh, ones that cost you a lot more money. Trust me. I have the same one and I'm still using the same bulb in it. Yep. yep. So I found over here at the Seiko site, I found their little drill press. You guys want to see it? Yeah, I'd like to see that. Uh, I, ha I, I know about it. I haven't seen it in a long time. Oh, yeah, there you go. How much is it? This one, 109 with shipping. Okay, oh. it's come down in price. I thought it was a lot more than that. Does that give an RPM on it, Lee? What's that, Rick? Does that say what RPM that runs? I'm trying to see. Uh, no, it doesn't say the RPM. I keep thinking it's like a Dremel and it's running 20 or 30,000 RPM. The precise drill, 90 degree. Uh, Check capacity is 0 to 1 eighth. Uh, DC power outlet. Uh, smaller bits, 1 to 1 16th. One, one year. Uh, replacement warranty, but it doesn't say. Um, yeah, I mean, that, even at 109, it's still kind of pricey because you can buy a Dremel a lot cheaper than that and get the base for it. Yeah, and the Dremel was, um, I just looked that up, and that was a buck. Uh, I, I actually have that, and if you got a really big piece. It, it works okay for it, but I'm not impressed with it. You say you do have it, Donna? Yes. Is it like uh, that? No, I, I'm just not, I'm not that impressed with that. You know, because I was doing the big piece um, for, for the Thanksgiving thing, and instead of using my my Dremel and all that stuff is like, cause you can set it up on top and just bring it down and, and do your hose. But I went back to using the Dremel on it cause I liked it better. All right. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, it's nine Oh five. So I'm going to do a quick little thing about the Midwest trade show. Uh, if you guys haven't already checked out their website, I know we did this last episode, but I'm gonna, I promised Karen I'd do it uh, a couple of times to make sure everybody knows about it. So um, bear with me if you've already seen it, but we're going to screen share this one more time. And uh, for anyone that hasn't already seen this, the Midwest Trade Show, you guys can see my screen now. This will be held August 18th and 19th in uh, Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, both day, or, um, tickets for uh, each day is $5 or 8 is um, it will be at the Dubuque County Fairgrounds, Iowa, and there will be uh, classes. I'm going to try to find that page. Here we go. Bear with me one second. So here's the class information page. If you click on this, it'll open up a PDF, and it'll tell you the schedule of classes. Uh, so there's classes both days, Friday and Saturday. Um, Classes begin at 9.30 a.m. and run to uh, let's see here, 4.30 p.m. on Friday, and then uh, 9.30 to uh, 3 o'clock on Saturday. Lee, and Davis, and Davis saying he can't see it on the screen. Can't see it on the screen. wonder why. Hold on. It was showing up on mine. Let me try this one more time. Screen share. Present to everyone. Can you guys see it now? I can. I'm going to see if I can. Okay. 
uh, anyway, um, yeah, so there's classes on Friday and Saturday. The classes start at 9.30 on uh, Friday, and they run until, uh, as I said, 4.30. Um, these, some of these classes are limited in size, like this one here is 25. This one's 25. Okay, the, the ones in chat are saying they see me. They see you. How about now? You have to click on yourself and then yeah. right click and say to present to everyone. But you physically have to click on yourself. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Donna, can I see it now? Um, that's what I'm asking. All right, um, let's go back to the main page. Yes, yes All, right. Just... All right, I'll go back to the main page real quick since you guys couldn't see it. Uh, MidwestTradeShow.com, the uh, show will be Friday and Saturday, August 18th and 19th in Dubuque, Iowa at Dubuque County Fairgrounds. Uh, the show goes from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. on Friday and 9 p.m., I'm sorry, 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, Entry tickets are five dollars each day, or eight dollars for both. Class information go here, and um, as I said before, classes start at nine thirty and go to four thirty on Friday, and then on Saturday they start at nine thirty and go till uh, three o'clock. Also, there is a scroll saw contest um, as well. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to make a point to you guys: if any of you guys are interested in these classes. Please come on here and look because um, these class sizes are limited. So some say like 25, but there's a few that only say like uh, five. So make sure you guys look at the class size. And if you are interested, make sure you sign up early. Okay. Now I'm going to click over here to the contest information real quick. Right here on this page is the contest entry form. So you guys can check this out and uh, fill this out and bring it with you, and uh, you can enter your or your uh, <clears throat> project when you get there. Um, it's five dollars for per entry. So um, if you guys want to fill out this form, fill it out and then take it with you, uh, and then turn it in there with your projects. All right. And if you guys have any questions about um, places to stay. They have that on here too. Um, there's some recommended hotels on here. Uh, if you guys see, there's the uh, Grand Harbor Resort, uh, Hotel Julian, Best Western Plus, Hampton Inn, Holiday Inn, Baymont Inn. All these are pretty close to um, where it's at at the fairgrounds. So um, there's also campgrounds down here at the bottom if you guys want to camp. So make sure you guys come onto the website and check that out. All right, let me get out of here and stop presenting. Okay, um, Donna, are there any questions on the outside uh, chat for anyone? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, all right, uh, it's 9-11. Do you guys have anything else? Ross? I have a question, if you don't mind. Russ, do you have anything else you want to talk about, Russ? Yeah, Katie had a question first. Oh, okay. What yeah. was Katie's question? Well, I ask is the problem where they overthink everything before they do it. Uh, about more than you do it, you know. You tend to plan each and every little step in my head. Uh, Especially when it's a new project that I haven't done before. All right, I'm hearing. Uh, you guys hear that? Because I'm having a little trouble hearing her. I yeah, she's breaking up so bad I can't hear her. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble. Hey, uh, Katie, why don't you type your question in the inside chat, and then we can uh, see what you're saying. <clears throat> uh. Yeah, I had a couple of little things real quick. 
But yeah, you know how to get to the inside chat, Katie? Yeah, she knows. Okay. Uh, All right, go ahead. Uh, first is my granddaughter was over today. Uh, she's my grandson and granddaughter comes over. You know, it's summer, so they're out for summer vacation, and um, they both her and my grandson was in here last week, and then uh, Audra came in today. But anyway, they've been. I've been letting them on the scroll saw, but only with me sitting there and holding them down and uh, doing everything with them. So they're finally get uh, they're seven, eight years old now. I think they're seven years old now. So they're finally getting big enough that they can actually start doing the scroll saw on their own. So at Audra in today, she made a couple of things. One of the things that she made today, and this was by herself. Now I had uh, gauges a little naturally a little bit bigger stropping boy so he didn't have to, he didn't have to have me with my hands kind of help when it hold down because I'm using an ultra reverse blade so it wants to lift the um, the wood up if you're not careful but anyway with just helping her uh, hold the wood down she did that today on the skull saw by herself very nice yeah I was really 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 proud of her she did a real good job and then I, she, she made a puppy also I, I gave her a little pattern of a puppy and we made that and she I said can I she brought me the smiley face and handed it to me I said oh, but I want the puppy too and she goes no I'm taking the puppy home <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get the puppy to show off and the other thing is, is this I've been I had this hammer for done uh, for months I mean literally months and uh, I take it and show it off all the time and everything well I finally got off my butt my granddaughter was out here, uh, or my son was out here with me a little earlier, and I said, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity, and boom, I finished the hammer, finally. Very cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. You're going to put that pattern up on the uh, group? Yeah, I was going to get it done today, but I didn't because uh, – with my granddaughter over here and everything, I'll get to work on that tonight and probably get it up tomorrow. Uh, but I'm going to make the handle just solid, like I said before. So for anybody that wants it, and oh, 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 I forgot, I forgot. Uh, I'll be right back. Hold on, just one second. Okay. Okay, right back. Uh, Ken McCory wants to know if somebody will pick him up for the to take him out there to the. Uh, Midwest Grove Saw Trade Show. Okay, where's he located? Uh, give me a minute and he'll type that. And Ron said, tell Russ that, let me find it. Uh, let Russ know Florida's beating Yellow Shoe 3 to 0 on the 6th. Spoke too soon, 3 to 1. Yeah, we know, uh, we're aware of that because uh, actually. The game's on the TV right behind us, so we're watching it. <laughs> so anyway, the other thing I wanted to show was um, the uh, pliers that I did on the uh, show the other night. These turned out really, really good. I'm very happy with the way they turned out. I think they look really cool. Do you have that pattern up yet, Russ? No, I'll get it up tomorrow. And tell them where to find the pattern because we got some new ones out there. Yeah, it's simplywoodencreations.com. Go over to patterns and click on that link, and it'll open up a page. And I don't have a lot of patterns out there, but I have a few that I put up. But um, yeah, they're, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this. this. Is the first time I've ever tried anything. Uh, I mean, I do a lot of compound cutting, but it's the first time I've ever really tried anything like this. And uh, they work really, really well. I was really, really shocked uh, how good they uh, they work. But that, that's it. Just uh, those few little things that I've been playing around with. It was fun to have my granddaughter in the shop today. And Ken says he's in North Carolina, and he was just joking. <laughs> um, Edward is saying, biggest worry is how his service dog will handle the machine noise at the trade show. Do you know how loud it is, Al Lee? At the trade show? Yes. 
Is it real loud where it might bother a service dog? Nah. No. No, I, I was there last year and there was no loud to it at all. You, we were able to talk, you know, and there wasn't. I mean, Rick can contest to the fact uh, too. He's there all the time, and it's not allowed. Even with the machines going and the saws on, it won't bother the dog. Okay, Katie had put. She tends to overthink everything. Is she the only one that does that, or does anybody else do that? In reference to a project or pattern. <laughs> I'm having trouble hearing Katie, so... Um, I would say Katie. with any project... I I don't have that problem. I mean, I just... I mean, I know there's... There's been times that I've overthought things and tried to uh, get too fancy with things and ended up breaking projects because I tried to uh, get too fancy with it. But uh, sometimes, you know, the simpler way is the easier way, and... The only thing that I, I mean, I really don't overthink what I have problems with is uh, I'll get locked in on something and I just won't quit until I'm finished with it. In other words, like if I wake up, I'll be thinking about like those pliers, those stupid pliers, about the pattern for that, that pliers. And uh, uh, once I got started on them, I, you know, I wasn't stopping until I got them complete. You made like three sets. Yeah. <laughs> and then cut out like three <laughs> sets just to make sure they were going to work. So. Yeah, but over, yeah, I don't know about overthinking. I've got a fun question for everybody, for the, the panel and everybody in the, that's on the chat line. I myself, I myself have a, I have a pattern that I started, that I, I bought it, the pattern, at the second Sloan's Picnic, which was around 2001. So I've had this pattern started for about 16 years. Does anybody else have patterns like that, that projects that they have started and not finished? Yes. yes. Not me. <laughs> I have an intertio, uh Kathy Wise project that I started probably five, six years ago now, and uh, I never finished it, uh, partially, partially because I had a lot of gaps in it. Um, and then when I switched saws, when I cut it from the original saw, it wasn't the same as the new saw, so it presented a problem. Um, I had every intention of recutting everything on the new saw, and then I just never got around to it because now I don't have the actual equipment to round it off and sand it uh, other than a Dremel, which I do have, but I have never gotten around to finishing it. But it's in a box up here on the shelf, somewhere around in that area. <laughs> I have a Roman cathedral clock. I started back when I had a craftsman scroll saw, which did a really bad job. And just, I look at it and go, I need to finish that. <laughs> it's still sitting there. That's probably somewhere around 12 years ago. <laughs> the longest it ever took me to do a project is I started a, a portrait pattern of a deer a couple of deer, like the mama deer and the baby deer on a mountainside. And um, I, I worked on it for a, a, like a day or so. And I, I'm the type of person, I like getting in the projects and getting them done and getting them over with real quick. So uh, after a day of cutting on that, um, it uh, frustrated me. So I put it on the back burner. So it took me about a month to do that particular project. We you need some of these. Yep. What is that, Rick? It's a little disc and it says round to it on it. Okay. He will get around to it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I get around to it. I get it. <laughs> okay. Very good. <laughs> um uh, well, um, it's going on about 922, so, uh, hey, Rick, real quick, do you, want, do you have a project that you uh, never finished? Not that I can think of. I mean, well, yeah, I guess I've got some that I started designing and never really finished up. Just lost interest in them and got upset. 
Yeah, it's interesting you say that because from a design standpoint, I have a ton of patterns that I start, I get halfway through them, and then I get sidetracked by something else, um, or I start working on something else, or I lose interest. And then, so in a, from a design standpoint, too, that's that's there's a. If, if I buy a pattern uh, and start cutting it, I'll usually finish it. I've also bought patterns that I've never cut yet. I've been doing this for 30 years, and in 30 years, I may, may have bought six patterns in 30 years. Well, see, you aren't the pattern hog that I am. <laughs> well, I just usually make my own patterns, I mean. I bought two different CDs from Charlie on his patterns, and then when, uh, shoot, what was it? I want, I want to say Cherry Tree. Rick, Rick out in Oregon, uh, and then he sold out. Very best. Very best. Very best. Very best. Years ago, they had a deal for like $500. You could get every pattern in the catalog. And they send them all printed out, and it's a stack about a foot and a half high. And I bought those. And, you know, I haven't completed all them. Usually, and then I've subscribed to about every magazine, and so I haven't completed all of my other magazines either. Usually if I can see something, if somebody can give me a picture of something, I can duplicate it. I mean, I'm just... Not bragging, I'm just that good. If I can see, literally, you can ask him. He's seen people bring me, pick or send me pictures and say, hey, I need, can you make one of these? And I'll look at it and go, sure, no problem. So usually if I can put my eyes on it and see it, I can make the pattern. Well, it depends on how simple the pattern it is. Huh? You know, if I bring you a picture of the dome clock, you aren't going to draw the pattern for that for me. Well, yeah, I'm not going to do a cathedral of the, uh, what is it, the Eiffel Tower off of a picture. So, but as a general rule, if you bring me a pattern, I can duplicate it. Well, or a uh, pattern, I mean a, um, a picture of something like, uh, for instance, like a regular clock uh, that has like flowers on it or something. It, it's, you know, if I can see it, I can duplicate it or, yeah. Two, three. And anybody that's out there, the score is Florida three, LSU two in the baseball playoffs. <laughs> and can all right, uh, Donna, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did we have any questions over in the chat room? Um, no, just a lot of people saying that they have unfinished things also, and as far as overthinking. Um, we got Ron saying he tries not to think. All right. Well, um, it's nine twenty-six. Uh, what's that? Should've Ron said, said roll tight, Russ. <laughs> roll tight. Yeah. There you go, Russ. I know you're watching it because I see you looking back. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we might end this early so uh, Russ can get back to his football game. So, um. <laughs> Does We're anyone have anything baseball, else before we end it? Baseball, baseball, not football, baseball. Oh, sorry, baseball game. Sorry. <laughs> college World Series. College World Series. For, yeah. the, for the whole. Oh, there you go. Yeah, for all of the U.S., the College World Series. Florida and SF, or LSU is uh, facing off. Gotcha. All right, one last shameless plug before we go, because I forgot to do it. Uh you guys want to go to the Scholar's Choice website, check out the magazine. We've got it PDF and in print. Uh, if you're inside the United States, you can order it in print. Outside the United States, PDF only. Uh, you can check out our website right there. It's Scroller's Choice and the screen for us. So it's uh, Scroller's Choice mag, M-A-G dot Wix site dot com slash home. Uh, go there and check out our website. Uh, if you go to the orders or uh, buy a back order page of all the previous issues. 
so you guys can check those out if you want. Uh, and that's pretty much it for me. Um, I want to thank everybody that was on the panel tonight. Uh, Russell, Russ Clarity, Rick Hutchinson, Katie Dotson, Carl Taylor, Donna Presley, everyone that was out in the chat. Thank you very much. Cameron. 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 Sorry, Cameron. No problem. <laughs> Sorry, Cameron. Didn't mean to forget you. No, it's okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, until next time, sing your song. Sing your song, Russ. Oh, you want me to sing this out? Sure. I told you you could sing this week. Give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. All right, see you guys next time. <laughs> I could fly.